So we designed a, uh, a system that can take any arbitrary input on a touchscreen and uh, build a filter around a transfer function that a user draws. Um, then we can then take that transfer function and using real-time convolution get an input signal from a signal generator audio outside world and then transform it according to what a user in fact draws. So we can show you a uh, using a Parks McClellan algorithm uh, a simple low pass filter. So right here we're going to set our sampling frequency to 20 kilohertz so we can resolve up to 10. The maximum amplitude will be 1 on the transfer function plot. Some instructions, uh, some instructions. right there. So we'll some limitations that. to what we can and do. And you want it a low pass, right? Mm -hmm. So a nice low pass right there. That'll have a cutoff at around, I don't know, 0.4 pi, 0.6 pi, be the bands. So then we can run the algorithm. It'll start uh, linearly interpolating and doing some moving average, median ad average filtering to make it nice and pretty so that we can parse it into distinct band regions. So now we've found the bands and Parks McClellan will run a, for 10 iterations until it converges at which point it will then spit out the filter coefficients that it has generated, so you'll see that shortly. So all of the floating point arithmetic here is running on the PIC32. Yep. How fast do you clock in the PIC32? 40 megahertz. It's actually long double arithmetic. <laughs> long double. Yeah. Long double. Oh floating point is not accurate minutes. enough. Floating point won't get you the right numbers. Mm. Alright, so there's the iteration, and then it's uh, for debugging it, spitting out the coefficients mm. for you. I believe that would be, what is it, a length 17 filter? Uh, this one, no. We're using a length 30 35. 70, five 17 filter. times 2 plus 1. Yep. Okay, so now you're in, now, now that you're in real-time mode, mm -hmm. so we can go up here and look at the oscilloscope. And... You can turn channel 2 off. Channel 1 is the, is the output of our system, so we're sampling an incoming signal from a signal generator through an ADC, and then outputting after we send that through our filter through a DAC. Okay, so right now it's about 2 kilohertz, mm -hmm. and you think that the cutoff should have been about... Uh, 4 kilohertz? Yeah. 4 kilohertz, so... We'll put it up a little bit. As we turn it up, it, the output drops, and we go over here and look, and we're at about 4.9 after it's uh, maybe down to 25% amplitude. Very nice. As we go higher, too, up to 6 kilohertz, it drops even further. So now it's way down. And, and then this would then be in the stop band, so that if, no matter if we go up even even higher up, it'll still it'll stay it stays, about roughly so, the same amplitude. So now we're up to 8 kilohertz, and, and the output is still low. So this is, this is mathematics heavy. You're doing a lot of arithmetic to get the Parks-McClellan uh, yeah. calculation done. And you said you also had a FFT fitting mode? Yes, so um, that's a slightly simpler <coughs> scheme. It'll use a frequency sampling method. So what you do is you take the user's drawn transfer function and sample it along n evenly spaced points. Here we choose n is equal to 32. That'll generate a length 64 filter, and it's guaranteed to match the frequency response that the user drew at each of those points, but doesn't guarantee anything about the transfer function at any other point so because it, of the naivety. It gives us more freedom to, to draw a more arbitrary transfer function, but then again, it's you're not going to have as perfect accuracy, and you're not always guaranteed the stability that will come with Parks McClellan. So you could have a Gibbs phenomena between yeah. the points, yeah. right? Yeah. Whereas yeah. Parks McClellan will minimize, minimize that. that. Yeah. Thank you.